Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you all are having a wonderful day whenever you're seeing this. Um, one second though. Okay, you guys might hear Bashar in the background because he's up and, you know, doing his baby toddler thing. So, well, he's a toddler, no longer a baby. He's four now. So, <laughs> I can stop calling him a baby, maybe. I don't know. So, today oh first if this is your first video here watching this my name is chanel i am tarot reader with lizzie's charm um i'm also a facilitator for women and just tapping into themselves really through their feminine energy so today i am going to be sharing um well, I've been called to start sharing a little bit more about myself, just my thoughts on things, um, my insight through the knowledge I have acquired over the time that I have really just been on the path, my path, um, and just, you know, figuring things out for my life. And how that's going to manifest or you know well we don't ever really know how anything's going to manifest but just figuring out what who how it is that i need to be in order for life to i guess make sense for me in some sort of perspective or really to just come about you know so this is called tea time so if you have some tea go ahead and get you some or if you drink coffee do that too i drink coffee too some days i'll have coffee um but today i have tea and in my cup i have a little wound bling it has rosebuds hibiscus nettle what else let me see red raspberry damiana and some chase berry so this one is really good for that follicular ovulation stage. It, you know, feeds and nourishes the ovaries and egg production and just tones the womb and all those wonderful things. And this tea will actually be available in the store on the website, I'm going to say at the end of the month, if not after Christmas. I haven't decided yet, but when I know, you guys will know, you know, so. <laughs> hmm. So today, I am sharing my spiritual journey, how it is that I got to this place that I am in right now, um, where that all kind of began, what has kind of transpired, the things I've learned, the things I've done. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about everything because I don't want to make this video too long, but I am going to share um, quite a bit. So I felt that it was going to be about an hour. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that long because I know we all have other things to do than to sit around and listen to somebody talk about themselves, you know, so... I'm gonna try and make this as short as possible, but try to share some things that I hope maybe will inspire you to uh, do something similar for yourself, open up to whatever healing capacity, whatever healing modalities, um, whatever transformation practices that will help serve you through your life's journey, you know, cause it's all different for all of us. Mine has been, long-winded um and what i'm realizing is that uh, my purpose is to just simply be on the journey you know be on the path learn more and more about myself make sure i'm aligned to the life that i desire the life that i'm building and all of those things that i have the right people around me the right circumstances around me and doing what i need to do to um create that you know, really manifest that life. It is that I see for myself that I've actually always seen for myself. It's funny, you know, I'm at this place where it's just like, 
wow, damn, I've always wanted to do these things. <laughs> so here I am doing them. So we're going to get started. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, where it is I'm, have, I'm coming from, where I've been, where I am, and where I foresee myself going. You know, so I wrote a couple of things down because <laughs> it's, it's quite a few things. When I say it's definitely been a journey, it has been a journey. You know, I have um, really just been learning a lot about myself, you know, and uh, getting very clear on who it is that I'm, I truly am versus who it is that I have always believed myself to be. Um, you know, because you never actually see your eyes, see yourself through the eyes that other people see you, you know? So let me see. I am pulling. I wish I would have had this pulled up. Let me, I'll be right back. All right. Because I don't want dead silence. <laughs> Okay, so in about 2011, um, was it 2011? I started recognizing some things about myself. Um, it was like body issues though. And it had to do with, it. this generated from my breath, right? So, I would go and ask people, do you smell my breath? Is my breath really crazy? I, it, it's, look, for me to even be sharing this stuff with y'all, wow. Okay, because my fourth, my Scorpio on fourth house is very private. I have, I'm very private about my personal life, my personal self. So um, just sharing these things, it's just like, I guess it's just kind of me getting rid of it. I don't really know. It doesn't matter. Anyways, so basically something that was nothing ended up manifesting into something over the years after being so focused on that. Outside of that, um, that generated this lack of trust in the people around me because I felt like everybody was lying to me instead of um, trusting them, you know, but you know, the type of people I, I hung out with, like, they're wonderful people. I love them. Um, but, you know, we was the type of people we kicking the shit all the time and the dishing out jokes and all kind of stuff, you know. So just being in that, that frequency, it really uh, brought out this sense of distrust in me. In reality, it was just my spirit. Uh, calling to for change for transformation in my life right because the breath it it correlates to life itself you know it is everything that um you know that is without it you're not living you know so um about what was it okay so from there once that began, I had, I have an aunt, she's been a vegan for like many, many years. So, um, I hit up my aunt and she's been a vegan for, as long as I remember, I'm 30, 31 now. So when I was out oh, forever, really, like it's been over 30 years that she's been a vegan. So, um, you know, I just really been on her conscious awakening journey even longer you know so I hit her up and she gave me some stuff and re actually I had asked her about some books on food veganism she ended up giving me books on spirituality <laughs> like the four agreements and I don't remember what else that's the one I mainly remember and I read that one time and I had actually read it on a train ride to New Orleans right and that just shifted my entire perspective on life things like it just started opening 
things I was just really wasn't aware of and my being really shifted with this like I just started transforming not to to also mention Uranus was conjunct my natal sun uh Mercury and Venus, which I all I have all in the ninth house, right? So this is um was it still in Pisces when this happened? It may have still been in Pisces when that that trigger happened, right? So that's in my eighth house, and my North Node is in my eighth house in Pisces, you know. So that is spirituality, the occult, metaphysics, all of those things. So my world started opening up to all of that and I just started changing. Like I started becoming a person. I didn't know the people around me didn't know. They were just kind of like, what is going on? You know, what is this? You know, so I had a friend that ended up coming through and we, we connected and she introduced me to this holistic school and everything. And um, basically uh, I started getting into detox therapy because I felt like I needed to detox, you know, something's wrong with my body. I need to get my body together. When in reality, it was, it had absolutely nothing to do with my body and everything to do with me, you know? So, <laughs> um, granted, my body probably, it did play some kind of role in it, um, but I wasn't feeling like, I wasn't feeling like I didn't have any energy. Like I was still feeling very healthy. I didn't start not feeling healthy until um, after some time of being raw for a really long time. I was raw, ate raw foods for like six months and then I went to become a vegan for a couple of months after that. And um after I went through this detox therapy training, um, I started uh, a basically a detox therapy like based service um, and called it Resplendent Anatomy. <laughs> I don't know those who have been like because I'm going to share this on my Instagram. So those who have been following me on Instagram for the the past seven years, you know y'all have witnessed all these transformations you know and um i just went down this really extreme path of you know feeling like that it's the food the food is causing everything and uh the same uh program that i went through they also the people who run it um they also had a sacred woman program so i did sacred woman for that was like a three month thing but let's backtrack for a second because before i did any of that what really pushed me over the edge is i was um dealing with this guy right and all my life since i was a little girl i always knew that i wanted to be be married be in a relationship more so be married have a husband have a family you know and I come from a really big family. Um, excuse me, my dad has 11 siblings, my mom has six siblings, and then I have a plethora of first cousins through all of those. Like it's maybe combined, um, probably over 50 of us, you know? So I've always, family has always been very near and dear to me. Um, that's always been something that it has always been very important, been, a very part of the makeup of who it is that I am, you know, and um, although I, I have a family now, you know, but we live a very, we, we're very unconventional. So, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So a lot of my relationships from friendships to just uh, lovers and things like that really, propelled me into this space of desiring to make this or just really aligning to this transformation 
a spiritual awakening that I was happening. Like what this started in 2011 <laughs> went on for, it seems like forever, you know? And, um, after that, after I realized that like, like I wanted to be with this guy and in hindsight, like, I'm like, why did you want to be with this guy? Like, it, it, he was a cool dude, but he was just a cool dude, you know, kind of thing. He really wasn't somebody who would have uh, been able to resonate with the person it is that I am today, you know, and that's so important. And I'll have another video talking about that, talking about relationships, us being women in relationships with our men, but that's not today. So... After that, before I actually got into the detox therapy thing, I had did this master cleanse, you know, and uh, experienced that for a little while. And then I went back to my old bullshit. Like, I like to do ratchet shit with my friends. Like, you know, that's, that's one of my favorite pastimes. Maybe because I have my son in the ninth house. I got Sagittarius in the fifth house, you know, so... Um, and then Jupiter's in my 10th house. So, <laughs> which is the ruler of Sagittarius. Um, so, you know, I just, I like to have a lot of fun. I like to turn up. I love the turn up, you know, but how much of that can you do? How much of, when does that get old? When does that get done? And my life was starting to reflect um, everything that I was experiencing through this. Like I was, like I was partying like seven days a week, waking up, drinking, being drunk, 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, it's funny. I seen this, this guy on Facebook the other day, he posted this meme and uh, the guy was like, oh, he's like, you know, I'll be meeting these women. They all, they beautiful, got their shit together, um, working their own jobs, got their own place. And I hang out with them. And no, he's saying, I'm wondering, like, why are you single? And then I hang out with them and they getting drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning and realize, oh, that's the problem. You know, that's, that's the light of life I thought I was going to be living. You know, I really, I was like, I was okay with that. Like, I'm just going to party and turn up because it seems like as far as having a family, having a relationship, that's not being realistic in this society that I live in, with these people that um, continue to be show up in my life not realizing that I was attracting these people I was attracting these circumstances based off of the beliefs I was holding you know but that didn't came come till later down the line um about the time I got into sacred woman and I did that um that was cool I did um the, the program itself the 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 rite of passage of sacred woman I'm very grateful for all that it brought into my life, that's really what opened me up to uh, tapping into my feminine, getting more into my body, into myself as a woman, um, connecting more with my womb space, something that I really never knew anything about, you know, and just learning things that I didn't know. It's just the only thing about that is um, it comes from a very it operates from a very masculine standpoint, energetic space, you know, so it's very extreme, whereas women, we flow, we're fluid, we, we need change, we need variation in, in, um, we don't do well with a lot of structure, it, you know, it stresses us out, and I didn't know that, um, I also didn't realize that I first needed to really get in and change my mind before I started dipping into my womb space, which is something that I didn't learn until like while I was pregnant with my son four years ago <clears throat> when I connected with a teacher who has brought so much love, so much insight, so much uh, pivotal, transformational um, presence into my life. You know, and so let's go, let's continue. So I go through Sacred Woman and going through Sacred Woman, I start learning. I've always started learning about um, birth charts and 
this opened up the interest that I already had in tarot, which was funny because I used to always say like, I would never do tarot cards. I would never involve myself in tarot or anything like that. But that was more of me being on my Christian stuff. You know, when growing up, my first introduction to God was through Catholicism. Um, My first eight years of life, I grew up Catholic, you know, and from there, uh, my mom decided that she didn't want that anymore. So we started going to non-denominational churches, you know, and really that furthermore expanded my idea of God, you know, in a different sense. Like my grandmothers, they are very religious, you know, my mother's mom, like she was waking up four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, going to mass for six, five. Okay, so, um, yeah, so after, oh, my grandmother, she, you know, going to mass in the mornings, you know, every morning waking up, very rosary, hell, Mary praying, very committed, very devoted um, to her, her practice to her, her, um, relationship to God, I should say. And, you know, this is what I witnessed growing up. And, um, so it wasn't really any type of shock or anything for like that for me to, um, be so, into spirituality um it wasn't anything that i wasn't already come on that i wasn't already in a sense accustomed to i mean robots that's not robots hold on so with that um once we started going to like non-denominational churches and everything like I don't know. Church was always just very boring to me. I was never really interested. Some just didn't feel right about it. I didn't feel connected. I didn't, none of that. But even once I got older, I still was going to church on my own, going to church with my friends and all kind of stuff. Cause it was, it was what I was used to. It's what I thought I needed in order to be a good person in a sense. Um, you know, be, have a sense of holiness, <laughs> I guess you could say. But um, so after the sacred woman, I started getting more into astrology and tarot. Granted, I have always, always been into the zodiac, been into astrology. When I was a little girl, I used to be at my grandparents' house. They would have the newspaper and I would take the comics and sure, I would be reading the Garfield comics, but in the back of the comics was the weekly horoscope. And I would be reading that um, in the room so nobody would see because it felt like that that was not supposed to be happening. You know, don't talk about that kind of thing, (laughs) you know? So um, as I got older, I was, always you know fascinated with zodiac signs people being Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, yada yada whatever but never really got into it until about 2012 and I came across this website called I think it's Alabe A-L-A-B-E and you can pull up your birth chart even if you don't have the time you can still pull up like the day you were born um and just see it tells you like your moon it tell you all the signs of your planets and stuff so i started getting into that and i was like oh man what is this like i didn't know it was this much more to the zodiac to horoscopes and i learned that it was astrology you know this was what like 10 2010 2011 that happened and then 2012 was when i started all of the detox therapy the sacred woman and in 2013 is when i decided to start the service being of service and things started changing quickly like i open up to things very quickly you know and i can see 
where things don't fit, where they don't feel right very easily. Um, and so I started opening up to different things, learning more about raw nutrition. And um, also while I was going through the whole raw food thing, recognizing that I was having these changes in my body and it was just strange. Like eventually to the point of that, I ended up um, in 2013, I started just going back to eating regular food, but I was eating anything. And it was kind of me being in this rebellious state because I felt like I had been lied to, like that people saying like, this is the only way and all kind of things like that. And then finding out stuff on my own that that wasn't the case. So I kind of felt bamboozled and it was just like, fuck it, you know, like I'm gonna just do whatever I want. And um, I had started a relationship with this guy and that didn't last very long because it just, we just didn't work out, honestly. Like I, <clears throat> Mm. it's always important that we choose <laughs> be very choosy I used to always say that all the time like I'm choosy I'm choosy in the mud all right and not until that I came across my um metaphysical feminine teacher that I realized that I was going in the right direction as far as being choosy being witnessing people for witnessing you know people for who they were you know because it always shows so that ended and then let's see when okay so during when i was in sacred woman that also introduced me to ritual so i started getting into candle magic and um doing that kind of work like working with the moon phases and things like that and that has just kind of expanded over time and i know that this is all over the place i'm sorry it's just i'm talking as things come like i didn't write any particular order to share these things but i will all make it all make sense make it all make sense yes so um in 2013, I had the relationship with God, sacred woman, got into ritual work, started getting into working with the moon, candle magic, and all of those things. And um, I started just learning more about these things for myself. There's also Bobby Hemet. I also learned a lot about just magic and being black from him um if that's something you're into i definitely recommend getting into some of his videos you can find his videos on youtube he really uh will awaken you <laughs> if you watch lovecraft country all that's 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 him that's the kind of stuff he talk about he he make make it reality, make it make sense, make it real, you know, so, um, cause that is real. <laughs> I can't believe that they even put that stuff on TV. When I watched that show, I was like, oh, okay. So anyways, um, so after I ended that relationship with that guy, um, I figured it was just time for me to be single. Like I, I had already been single for like a really, really long time. Um, in my life, I've been in three relationships. Um, and in between all of the, those relationships, I've dealt with other, other guys, you know, didn't have no relationship with them, just dating, having fun kind of thing. So, um, and I think I'm going to make a video on that because it's some things I just realized with those three relationships that I've been in, the ways in which that I began to perceive myself through those relationships, through their eyes, it had been coming up in, in kind of, a, it had been affecting me in my relationship with my husband. So but that's another video for another time y'all <laughs> but um i met my husband 
at the end of 2013. So I stopped dealing with Homeboy at the beginning of 2013. And then I met my husband at the end of 2013, like right before his birthday. His birthday is in September. He's a Libra. And I met him like in August. Oddly enough, I met him online. We just happened to be communicating in the same circle of people on the internet. And he started talking about some things and I and I just interjected in the conversation like, oh yeah, da 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 da. And we ended up becoming friends and um it just kind of grew from there. So through that time, that that was like a lot of my spiritual evolution journey awakening right because i i was now at this place i had already been at this place where i was just doing things totally different i wasn't working i wouldn't work a job or anything like that i was living at home not going anywhere not talking to anybody for real like i did have one friend i was hanging out with but i eventually stopped dealing with them as well um and just realizing like the the energetic the frequency that people were holding me in in my life the space that I was trying to get out of you know I still communicate with them um but for that time I had to had to separate you know and um you know I really needed to go and find myself who it is that I was what it was that I was about and without feeling like I was being judged or anything like that. So when I met my husband, it was just like, whoa, because we were so much alike. We're very different, but we are so much alike. We think so much alike. Um, we see the world very much the same way. We have similar values. We have different values, but we have very similar values. Um, you know, we, I really feel like we complement each other very, very well. You know, uh, our beingness, our spirit, you know. Granted, he's 6'4", and I'm like five foot. <laughs> so in a physical sense, uh, it's a little different. But as far as who it is that we are um, at a core level, uh, we really resonate with one another. So outside of my life having changed so much by this diet change the way I was living and all things like that like you know that was kind of shocking or just kind of like what in the world Chanel to <clears throat> those around me you know and just really needing to I was in this space of like really having to trust when nobody was really understanding what was going on with me you know but this is me listening to my ancestors and following their guidance and you know when they come to me and in, in, in guiding me you know in just trusting that I'm doing what I need to do so uh, my husband he's from the east coast he's from Baltimore and uh at first I was gonna go move up there with him but that wasn't working out because he was having a hard time finding work and stuff. And it, I'm, I'm here in Houston. So it's just easy to make things happen in Houston. Like it's so much opportunity, so much, so many things available to make happen here. So I was like, you know what, well, I'm gonna go get a job. I'm gonna start working and we'll just, you know, get you out here and we'll go from there. And that's what I did. So I started working these different jobs, these little temporary jobs. Um, looking for places to move to. He did come down and visit that summer um, of 2013. And I thought that things were going to work out differently, that he would be able to stay, but it just, things didn't work out. It wasn't the time, divine timing for real. That is real. So I ended up, it wasn't until... Wow, he moved out here October 29th of 2013. And I found this job and just started making all this money. In reality, I did some candle work. 
um, on a moon. I don't even remember what moon it was. And uh, the next week I found this job. Um, or maybe it was a month because I started getting like temporary jobs. And I basically found this job make, making all this money. And then I found a place on Craigslist. This girl was trying to sublease her apartment. I found that, moved in over there. Um, in October 29th, he came to Houston, you know, and that's pretty much all she wrote. And that whole process, just me even being with him has been a very gross space of growth for me because um, it has really opened me up to being okay with doing things that people don't find okay, you know, this man coming down, nobody knows him kind of thing. Um, and knowing that I'm doing the right thing for myself, for my life, you know, he's been such a catalyst in my growth. Um, as far as holding space and making space possible for things that I would not have been able to do without him. Uh, because after, once he moved out here, the next year, I stopped working and started just doing, being a home wife, a housewife, you know, and taking care of the home. He would go out and work. I would just make sure everything was good. And then in 2014, was it 2014? I had uh, I had gotten pregnant. I had a miscarriage. Um, was it then? Yeah. And then 20, we had a roommate, and we ended up moving on our own in 2015. And then at the beginning of 2016, I got pregnant with my son, and we had him October 29th. We had a home birth. And yeah, that was amazing. It, it's really been amazing, but it's been a lot of growth uh, there for me. It's been such a transformative journey because one, well, me and my husband are, are 11 years apart. <laughs> he's 11 years my senior, you know, so he's much more grown than I am. So it has showed me all the ways that I thought I was aware of something that I have not been and have really needed to uh, continue to grow in myself, continue to be disciplined in myself, continue to do the work, you know, in a lot of this and with him moving down here and um, having and giving birth to Bashar, like just everything, everything, like my confidence just was really shot. Like I haven't, hadn't been myself for or felt like myself for a really long time but that's because who I was was completely transforming it was changing in a way that I never expected you know so now I'm at this place I read tarot you know I read astrology sometimes I'm not into I'm still into astrology personally but doing it for the public and stuff it's, it's a lot for astrology because it's like reading a book um and i don't i don't really like investing all of that energy into into that anymore you know so you know if you met me when i was a little girl and asked me what it was i wanted to do when i got older who i wanted to be i would have told you well i want a husband and children and i want to be miss cleo <laughs> and not miss cleo in the sense of the gimmick but you know, I thought homegirl was really out here being a psychic, helping people change their lives and just find out it was just a big ass scam. But I mean, what do you expect with infomercials um, and late night calls coming through on Fox, on just regular broadcasting television? <laughs> I didn't know. I was like eight. Okay. I had no clue. Maybe seven. I don't know. Anyways. Um, so I've always just been very interested in all things occult and just going through these, this, this spiritual journey has, uh, gave, provided me the space to be able to get out of my own way so I can be who it is that I want to be, do what it is that I want to do and really show up and be of service to people in the way that I want to, like really help people the way I want to that 
that that brings me joy and that I know is really going to be a benefit to them, you know, not only because it's been a benefit to me, but anybody that I have held space for, they have been able to really make shit happen for themselves, you know, and granted, they, they do it on their time because <laughs> we all on our own time. We all on our own timelines, you know, but it happens. It gets done. And that I think that I know that in itself is what brings me the most joy out of having gone through all of this, just being able to really give away everything that I have learned, that I have experienced through these past 10, 10 years, you know, nine, 10 years, however long it's been, you know, it's just been a very eye-opening, awakening, transformative, life-changing experience for me. And granted, everybody's journey is not going to be like this. And and I feel like that I had to experience it in the vastness that I did. So I would be able to support people wherever it is they are, whatever it is that they want to do, you know? So, you know, personally, I just, I really, um, I believe in, you know, that we are sovereign beings, that we have the ability to change our lives and make them the way it is that we want by going within and seeing where it is that we're stopping ourselves from doing that. I believe in marriage. I believe in family. You know, those are very big values for me. Um, granted, my idea of marriage is not, um, it's not, conventional but it is it's traditional but it's not a conventional aspect of tradition you know so and just to and I believe in in women you know I believe that they have the power that we have the power to make life as we see fit you know to have a happy life, have beautiful relationships with our children, beautiful relationships with our husbands, with our spouses, with our partners, you know, have beautiful lives. Like it's, it's possible because I'm, I've seen it be possible through my own self, through my own life. You know, I, I know that we can overcome anything that, that any type of obstacle, any type of emotional blockage, any type of mental blockage, it's worth our time looking into so that we can co-create so that we can be the, the embodiment of who it is that we have um, contracted here to be, who we chose to be, you know, we, we made the choice and the choices keep coming as we keep living, you know, and if we so believe it, if you so choose, then it shall be. And out of all of these things, what I've learned most about myself is that I'm really good at recognizing patterns. And I think I said that earlier in this video. Like, I can I can see variables really easy. I can see um, uh, what how things are going to play out based off of how it is that you're choosing to feel, think, and go about things. Some people call that being psychic. You know, sure, if, if that's what we calling it, I'm psychic, all right? <laughs> I can read signs and symbols, you know, numbers, all those things. That Those are things that just come naturally to me. Like, it's, it's like home for me, you know? And um, I, can, I just have the ability to see, you know, and I think that, and when I don't have that, there are, I know that there will be an experience to show me what it is that I am not seeing for myself, you know, and I do well with doing whatever it is that I need to do to not operate, you know, I like to deal with my shadows, I like to deal in the darkness, and I'm okay with whatever comes up, whatever needs to be integrated within me. Like I'm okay with whatever lessons it is that needs to be learned. And it's been this journey that has 
given me that. Like I don't, I no longer, I used to be in the space of not wanting to be wrong, you know, always needing to be right. And I don't, I just don't feel that anymore. Like, please tell me when I'm wrong <laughs> so I can correct it. And not so that I can be right, but so that things can flow. So there can be peace. So there can be love, you know, because life without love is boring. Honestly, it's really boring. So yeah, I covered everything that I wrote down. It wasn't much. I hope this video isn't too long, but I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed listening to my little spiel today. And um, yeah, I'll have more tea times coming up very soon. Um, I'll probably do this like twice a month or so just to you know, talk about some things, talk about women related things, family related things, children related, mother related things. So, um, yeah, let me know what's, you know, just come through, say hello, however you feeling. It's what's, it's, it's really whatever over here. <laughs> I'm a very easy type of person. Like I don't, Things just, you know, things happen here <laughs> and I let them, you know, and I show up whoever it is that I need to show up as to correct, you know, not necessarily fix. We, I don't, nothing needs to be fixed. Some things just need to be realigned. Most things just need to be realigned, you know, and that's another thing I learned. I went through this whole spiritual journey with the whole food and diet changes and the extremism feeling like, Oh, I need to fix this. I need to fix this. This is wrong. This is wrong. When in reality, that was um, pulling me away from my nature as a woman, you know, not really being able to be in the space of embodying who it is that I truly am, you know, how it is that I truly am. But um, it's all been valuable. And without that, I would not have acquired the depth <clears throat> of understanding that I have without any of those things. So I'm grateful for all my experiences. I'm grateful for the path. I'm grateful for the journey. I'm grateful for the knowledge, the, the teachers, you know, the books, you know, there have been, I've read many books and what I've learned that at the end of the day, the books really don't matter. All right, they don't really matter. And that's a whole nother conversation for another day because everything is within, you know, and everything is without as above, so below, you know, and the best place that we can start is within ourselves, you know. So, you guys, I hope that this was helpful in some kind of way. I hope that this um, offers some type of encouragement for you to choose yourself, to love yourself, to know yourself a little bit deeper. And I'm here if you need anything. Bye, guys. Sending you all my love. So many blessings. Peace.